going on guys? Today it's a little different. What we're gonna be talking about is the wealth transfer. And we're gonna be talking about education, awareness, wisdom, insights, and knowledge. So this episode of the Institute of Economic Thought was brought to you by In School. This is what we're getting ready to get into. And let me go ahead and just talk about that. Uh, before I got sick, we were doing live trainings and here's what I plan to do going forward. This Sunday at 4 p.m. is gonna be the fundamentals of starting a business. Now, why am I bringing this up in this video, the wealth transfer? If you are an average person of moderate income, the wealth transfer is going to miss you. You're not going to benefit from the wealth transfer at all. And one of the things that I'm beginning to see, and let's just take something simple. Um, I'm also starting a podcast called The Art of Profit. That's going to kick off this month as well. That true now i've been listening to podcasts all day there are some really good podcasts there's some people putting out some really good information and the people who are putting out the good factual honest true information don't get the views of the people who are lying and bullshitting because i started to think how can i watch a youtuber and fundamentally know if they're talking truth or bullshit. And it's because of my fundamental um, business education. Because let's talk about, there's a lot of companies that are on the New York Stock Exchange that don't make any money. Well, that's not true. They generate revenue but they have yet to generate a profit. And one of the things, and this is what the uh, training is gonna be about Sunday, is for you to be in business, you gotta make a profit. And this is one of the things I consistently see. Everybody, due to the advent of financing, is getting into moderate to low profit businesses. And I started to think, and once again, I'm not gonna be flexing anymore with the Porsche and all this other stuff, but I made enough money in one month to go to the Porsche dealership and buy a Porsche, which means that I didn't have good profitability. I had extreme profitability. And this is one of the things that we're gonna get into with the training because another thing I'm doing is the rebirth of Hustlers Kung Fu where we're gonna get into the foundational educational aspects. Now, why is that important? Will this stuff make you money? At some point, yes, because you have an understanding. Because this is one of the things. Let, let's take the car rental business. Um, I didn't know what I was getting myself into. And I didn't have a fundamental understanding or an esoteric understanding or anything. And that's why what happened happened because one of the big problems is it was very hard to get factual, accurate, current, this is something we're gonna talk about, current marketplace data. Because here's the thing, let's say you start a business and you're crushing it and you're, you're, you're literally printing money hand over fist, right? I can guarantee you that's gonna change. Apple, trillion dollar company, first trillion dollar company. Apple almost went out of business. So when I had my first digital product and I made over a million dollars, I had the fundamental understanding that that wasn't gonna last forever. So I didn't start spending money like a crackhead and literally 15 months later, it stopped. So. Even if, and this is why I said, if you're gonna get into trucking, this is the time to get into trucking because you will get into a down market 
So this was properly adjust your expectations going forward. But there's not a lot of fundamental understanding of business, how to make money and how to generate money. And during this wealth transfer, you will need to have a business or you will need to have a lot of money. And let's take the first thing. And why is a business so it's such a beautiful thing? My business that I made 3 million only cost me $50,000 to run for per year. And that meant that I was making money without investing money. Let me say this again. I was making money without investing money. See, you see my hands, money coming in, money going out, money coming in, money going out. So one of the things that you want to do is have a situation where you have more money coming in, than you have coming out. And based upon the way that a lot of American businesses are set up, this is very hard because here on YouTube, there are a multitude of commercials talking about 0% financing. You can get up to $100,000 with a 650 FICO score. And when you start a business in debt, this dramatically changes your margins. I was watching a video of someone who was doing Airbnb and first few months, she didn't make any money. And then it got to the point where she started to make money and her name is Shelby Church. She spent half a million dollars between the down payment and the renovations of this property. And based upon her high season, which is 15,000, she's looking at not one, not two, but three years to recoup her cost. Three years to recoup her cost. And I look at that because all along she will be making money and she's a YouTuber. So she has a sizable AdSense check every month. So she can ride these three years out. But here's the thing. When you see a Graham Stephan, a meet Kevin, a Andre Jack, a Shelby Church. You cannot look at their advice as valid because you don't have that large YouTube check. I mean, I'm a small YouTuber. My good months, I make $15,000 a month. So compared to these guys, I am making chump change. So what does that mean? Let's say meet Kevin. He makes a million dollars a month from YouTube and his other enterprises. This means that meet Kevin can take a million dollars and throw it into an extremely risky investment and lose that million dollars. And the next month he's, he's back again. See, this is why I feel that people, and this, this kind of gets back into the education. Um, Elon Musk, Elon Musk has run into some limitations with him trying to buy Twitter. All of a sudden, he, uh, he's got to lay off 10% of his people. Uh, people are revolting, uh, upper management issues and all this other stuff. Cause Elon, in my opinion, went too far and he's starting to see some limitations because I think his net worth is like 200 billion. 44 billion represents 20 something and 25% of his net worth. That's a lot, a large percentage of money on something like, I don't know. I'm not on Twitter. I'm not on Instagram. So I don't really know how these things work. I do know they make money, but what I'm here to tell you is when you look at an Elon Musk or one of these YouTubers, you don't have the financial reserves that they do like meet Kevin, um, Andre Jack, he spent like hundred thousand dollars on Bitcoin. Uh, I think Andre Jack makes $300,000 a month from YouTube. So his Bitcoin investment can go to zero, zero. 
and he will be okay. And this is one of the things, because this is something I've been saying that most crypto is going to go to zero. Most NFTs are going to go to zero. And if you are a Graham Stephan, an Andre Jack, a meet Kevin, and you throw some money off in there and you lose your money. Oh, well, I lost a little money. I got plenty more coming in. But if you're an average person and you put $10,000 and that's the only money that you have and you lose it, it's going to hurt. And it's going to hurt for a while because see, this is something that a lot of people here on YouTube don't talk about actually making money. They talk about money schemes like the stock market. And I, I want to say hit uh, the real estate trapper, Ronnie. He actually said he ain't buying on the dip. Like right now, there are so many people telling you to buy on the dip to dollar cost average. And this is the longest that the stock market has been down in 90 years. I don't think this is just a blip. And you got all of these people who are telling you what you want to hear so they can make money. Uh, Graham Stephan makes a tremendous amount of money for giving crappy advice. Cause see, for me, you know, if I was to deploy, like I'm not in the stock market, I'm not in the stock market. I'm not investing nothing. And I'm sitting on cash and for everyone's talking about, oh man, your cash, you're losing purchasing power. Really? Let me see. Um, I don't really worry about that because I deploy a concept called money velocity. Now, what does that mean? Let's say I got a million dollars cash in the bank and I have a business that is making me $200,000 per month. So money is coming in so fast that the degra degradation of inflation I don't feel it. I don't feel it. Like right now, I'm operating at like 10%. And my 10% operating is still more than 99% of America. More than 99% of America. Because people don't understand that you have to put yourself at the intersection of production and receiving money. This is why all the NFTs like uh, rug pull, cryptos, rug pull, people are looking for something that, and I'm going to quote Elon Musk, they don't have to do that much. And if you get it in your head that you're going to have to produce, that you're going to have to work, that you're going to have to make certain good decisions that are not going to result in immediate gratification, you will put yourself in the position to win in the future. See, <clears throat> this is the thing. And this is where the education is so important. Like, you know, for years I've been saying things about certain YouTubers um, because I know how to make money. I know what it takes to build a business. I know what it takes to create a sales funnel. So when I see this YouTuber, like um, this one video, how to start a cargo van business with 300 bucks, I instantly deduced it was bullshit because the original premise that it was based upon was fundamentally flawed. And, but see, I know that because I've had 20, 32, I have 23 years of entrepreneur experience. And this is something else too. And this is going to be hard. You need to get primary experience in your business model. You're not going to be able to Google it. Now, let's say you're a plumber. And then you go to a plumbing convention with a bunch of other plumbers. There's value there because there will be plumbers there that will know things that you don't and that you can apply those to your plumbing business. So from that standpoint, that's good. But like, you know, I was talking about, I am 
until recently, I was the only one in this space of online courses. And you know, I'm getting ready to do some other training about content creation that's gonna literally blow your mind. And I was able, cause like I said, I'm addicted to this lifestyle. And this is why I'm not like, funny, funny story. Someone I recently befriended, he got into trucking. <laughs> and see, here's the thing. We as content creators, people like, this video actually costs me nothing to manufacture, but this video will make me money. So why take money that comes from an extremely lucrative business to put it into a business that has a high expense ratio? That's the lesson I learned with the car rental business. I will never do that again. Because once again, it was so hard to get information. So many people on YouTube was lying and Toro and all this other stuff. And th this is one of the things that for me, for me, the creation of your own product is extremely profitable. And that's why I'm doing the podcast called The Art of Profit, because when I see a good profit margin is 20%, I start laughing. The lowest profit margin I had in any business I've ever had was 50%. So for every dollar that I brought in, 50 cents was, was you know, b b aside from taxes, I could slide that in my pocket. And that's what I'm like, and I, it, it got me to thinking. There are so many people like, virtually all of the people who were doing Amazon FBA when we used to get into those fights, none of them are doing Amazon FBA because Amazon FBA got extremely competitive and the margins got tighter. And this is some stuff, you know, cause I have people who want to argue with me because they're doing something hip. They're doing something trendy and the business principles that I operate on have been around for centuries. If you do these things, you will make money. If you don't do these things, you will not make money. It's just that simple. It's just black and white. And one of the things that I'm going to get into the foundational education is because there was a bunch of people who got into um, hot shot trucking. And if you don't know what hot shot trucking is, that's when you have a dually pickup truck in a long ass trailer, right? And a lot of those people got in that hot shot trucking and now they're getting out of hot truck trucking because they've been in the business and they realized that if they were doing, had a semi, they would make more money for driving the same mileage. It was like, and I'm not talking about like 10% more. I'm talking about 50% more. Some cases, 70% more. And they're like, whoa, 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 whoa. Let me go ahead and get my CDL. Because here's the thing, so many people want to climb into uh, box trucks. Like there's a couple, the box truck couple, they got something going on. And I'm gonna say something for them. For them, what they're doing, it works. You wanna know why? Because they're old. They're 50, almost 60 years old. So for you to be 50, 60 years old, have a business that does 10 to $12,000 a month, that's really, really good. That's really, really good. And one of the things that I see is that people are not like, I'm gonna give you an example of an extremely profitable business. Have you ever heard of Grammarly? It's an app that spells check your words, right? It's very simple, right? It's a billion dollar company with amazing margins. See, it ain't nothing sexy about it. You know, it's like, it, it, like they make, I mean, the guy who owns it is a billionaire and no one knows it is because there, there's so many products in the marketplace that are like that. Convert kit, MailChimp, is a billion dollar company, MailChimp, sending in emails. So when we get into the education, we're gonna be talking about it, because one of the things I hate is 
a video titled, what are the best businesses to get into 2022? <sighs> That's just garbage because it's going to induce you to get into a trendy business. There's a guy selling chocolates on TikTok. Uh, he ran an ad and made half a million dollars. Now, I don't know, and let's, let's just go ahead and stick it there and get into the education. So you're running ads on TikTok and you sell half a million dollars, right? That could be a problem. Because here's the thing, what do we know about chocolate? Chocolate melts. So you got to store it in a cool warehouse and he had these half a million dollars in sales. Did he have the product on hand? Did he have to delay orders? Cause see, th this is something else. Like if you are manufacturing, let's say you're making leather purses and you keep an inventory of, let's say 5,000 purses on hand. And then you have a month where you sell 30,000 purses that can put you out of business. You're like, what? You only have 5,000, so you've got 25,000 orders for more. So what you're gonna have to do is like, hey, we got some delays. This is gonna create a lot of pressure and issues in your business because you have sold beyond your capacity. And th this is something that no one talks about because like, this is what I like. I can literally, somewhat, I can get a million hits on my website and my sales, I can get a million sales overnight and my infrastructure is already set up for that. So I don't have to worry about those stress points in my business. Like if I were to go on a podcast and then people heard of me and then uh, they went to the website and they started buying, the site's built for that. And this is a lesson I learned years and years ago when I had a blog. When I had my blog, urbanpackrat.com, um, once the storage auction shows came on, I woke up one morning and my blog was offline. I was like, what the hell? And I had to switch from a shared server because shared servers, and this is why hosting is so cheap. You're on a shared server. <clears throat> when you start getting to 150, 200, 300,000 hits per month, you need to move to a dedicated server. And that's what I had to do. And then my website went back up. So, you know, capacity about, you know, putting together your bit, you know, they're, they're, this is where we're going to get into foundational education. And I'm going to slowly roll it out this month and then kick it in high gear in July because people don't know this. Cause like I watch YouTube videos all the time. I was like, he's full of shit, but I know this because of my 23 years of valid business experience. Whereas you, and like, bless his little heart, this guy calls up Dave Ramsey. People are under the delusion that they can become billionaires simply because they will it. Um, there's a certain collective of variables that must come into play for you to become a billionaire. Number one, you gotta have scale. You're not gonna become a billionaire without crazy, crazy scale. It ain't happening. Elon Musk, they delivered like a million cars. That's crazy scale, million cars. So if you don't have crazy scale, you're not becoming a billionaire. It ain't happening. And I just listened to this because Elon Musk, he's been real vocal. That a lot of people don't want to work hard. And that's something that I have been saying for the longest. And I've been called a hater and like, you don't know what it is to have this suck ass job and to be working all these hours. Actually, I do. Actually, I had a lot of suck ass jobs in my life. And you know what? I've prepared and developed myself where I don't have to do a suck ass job. Hint, prepare yourself where you can do better. Cause like right now, there are people who are going to make a career out of DoorDash and is picking up and delivering food. They're going to make a career out of it. And that's sad because I went ahead. Let me tell you what happened when I got out the military in 1990. I went to work for North South Hospital and they started me like 15 bucks an hour. And then I did some stuff where I got like a dollar raise in like 45 days. And then I moved to second shift 
and I got a $2.45 shift differential. Do you understand the money that I was making in 1990 adjusted for inflation comes out to 35 bucks per hour. I've never, other than that period where I was living in a boarding house and went homeless, that was my period of working those shit chump chain jobs. And I was like, I'm never doing this again. I'm never doing this again. So what you've got to do is prepare yourself and you've got to um, integrate yourself where you don't have to do that. And this is going to be part of the education because so many people want to do Toro. And there, there are some people who are doing Toro. They're making a lot of money because they have access to capital. Um, ran into someone who's got like 85 cars and good credit. He had access to capital and does like a hundred thousand dollars per month. But I wonder what his costs are because he's got to have a dedicated building to park all those cars. He just can't park them anywhere. And he's got to have staff because I'm, I'm here to tell you, you cannot handle 85 cars by yourself. You'd be working 16, 17, 18 hours a day. So, I don't know of the breakdown of that hundred thousand, what is profit, what is expenses. And this, this is some stuff that we're going to go into because many of you just see something on YouTube and it's like, Ooh, that look good. Let me do it. Then you get into it. And that's when the bullshit starts. So we're going to be talking about that and a lot more. So be there Sunday, 4 PM. Like I'm getting ready to change up the format getting ready to do a podcast a lot of stuff's going to be changing a lot of stuff so with that i'll see you guys and the link for the training is in the first comment below so i will talk to you guys in the next one